The IMDG code can be used in different ways, depending on the function or role of the user. In this module, we are only dealing with receiving dangerous cargo, planning the stowage of dangerous goods, documentation, emergency procedures, and other main activities concerned with safe sea transport. The IMDG code is structured so that the user can start at the dangerous goods list, which contains information and codes that take the user to various provisions and instructions. The IMDG code consists of seven parts, appendices, and a supplement. Although available in electronic, internet, and intranet version, the traditional book form is in two volumes and the supplement. Volume 1 contains parts 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7, as well as the packing instructions. Volume 2 contains part 3 and the appendices. The supplement is contained within a separate volume. Now that we know what is included in the IMDG code, Let's take a closer look at each of the different parts relevant to transport of dangerous goods by sea. Part 1 outlines the relevant international regulations and defines any substance that is forbidden for transport under the IMDG code. Part 2 deals with how dangerous goods are identified and referenced using what is referred to as a proper shipping name, or PSN a reference known as UN number and a packing group that indicates the degree of danger. Part 2 explains the classification of dangerous goods into the hazard types in more detail. Part 3 contains the dangerous goods list, which is key to finding out more information about dangerous goods when the PSN or UN number is known. This part also includes details about how dangerous goods in smaller quantities, called limited and accepted quantities, are prepared for transport. Part 4 provides details about the way dangerous goods are packed. Its real relevance for sea transportation is the explanation of the requirements for portable tanks and multi-element gas containers, or MEGCs. Part 5 covers the requirements for the safe transport of dangerous goods consignments, including procedures for marking, labelling and placarding. It also explains the documentation requirements. Part 7 is concerned with stowage and segregation arrangements. This part provides details about how incompatible consignments of dangerous goods are segregated on container, row-row and general cargo ships. The appendix lists the UN number and proper shipping names of more general substances that do not have a specific name. The IMDG code deals with these by naming them generally and adding the letters NOS, meaning not otherwise specified. Lastly, we have the supplement. This includes the Emergency Response Procedures, or EMS Guide, and the Medical First Aid Guide. It also includes mandatory reporting procedures in case dangerous goods leak or are lost overboard. It also includes reporting procedures, recommendations for the safe use of pesticides on ships, and the INF code. Now that we know more about how the IMDG code is structured, let's focus on the key parts of the IMDG code, the Dangerous Goods List, or DGL. The traditional book version of the DGL is in Volume 2 of the IMDG code. For further information, it requires the user to refer to the part and section reference shown below the column number. Internet, intranet and CD versions use a data form with the text and numbers and links in blue. Clicking links will take the user to the relevant parts of the instructions or table within the IMDG code. This format uses data fields labelled according to the traditional book version of the dangerous goods list. Throughout the module, we will refer to these data fields as column numbers, following the traditional format. The dangerous goods list is divided into 18 columns that show specific information. However, for our purposes, we are only interested in 9 of these, columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 15, 
16a, 16b, and 17. Columns 1 and 18 show the UN number. Column 2 shows the proper shipping name, which is always shown in uppercase letters. It may be followed by additional descriptive text. Column 3 shows the class or division of the dangerous goods. Column 4 identifies any subsidiary hazard by its class or division. If the substance is a marine pollutant, it is identified by the letter P. Column 13 contains T codes applicable to the transport of dangerous goods in portable tanks and road tank vehicles. We will explain more about T codes later on in the module. Column 15 contains two codes referring to guidance to be used in the event of spillage or fire. These codes are known as emergency schedules. The first EMS code refers to the fire schedule. The second EMS code refers to the spillage schedule. Column 16A contains the stowage and handling codes. Column 16B contains the segregation codes starting with the letters SG and segregation groups starting with the letters SGG. Column 17 contains properties of and observations on the dangerous goods listed. Before we move on to the next chapter, let's consider some questions. Which of the following are included in the supplement to the IMDG code? Select as many as you think are correct. In which part of the traditional version of the IMDG code can the dangerous goods list be found? Which column labels are missing from the dangerous goods list below? Select two correct answers.